Hello, my name is Robert Balza, and thank you for your interest in my research program at Wisconsin Lutheran College. The first step in the prevention and treatment of genetic disease is understanding the expression pattern and function of genes that have been linked to a disease of interest. An ideal model system for the visualization of gene expression patterns and mutant phenotypes is the small freshwater zebrafish. A popular pet in household aquariums around the world the zebrafish is rapidly gaining popularity among biologists as well. A single mature female can produce over 100 embryos in a single week, like the one you see here. These embryos develop incredibly fast and remain optically clear during development of the major organ systems. But the best thing about zebrafish is that many genes implicated in human disease have close orthologs in the zebrafish genome. Since nearly the entire zebrafish genome is now freely available on the internet, we use this sequence information to design PCR primers for the amplification of specific genes directly from the zebrafish. Using this strategy, students in my introductory genetics course quickly generate many copies of their gene, purify the copies using agarose gel electrophoresis, clone this DNA into a bacterial plasmid, and finally label these genes using a green fluorescent protein taken from jellyfish or a red fluorescent protein taken from sea pansies. Upon completion of our fluorescent transgene, we pull 10 to 15 micrometer outer diameter injection needles and isolate one to two cell stage zebrafish embryos from specially designed breeding chambers. Now comes the tricky part. The zebrafish embryos must be injected quickly as a rapid succession of cell divisions occur within an hour after fertilization. We must work quickly and with steady hands. The engineered DNA must be carefully injected through the protective corian and into the relatively small cell that sits above a massive mound of yolk. After incubating the injected embryos to the appropriate developmental stage, the protective corian may be surgically removed using a fine watchmaker's forceps to facilitate visualization under a fluorescent microscope. Care must be taken, however, to not damage the fragile embryo at this stage. Shown here is a digital micrograph obtained by a former student in a pilot proof of principle experiment. For subsequent analysis at the cellular level, the transgenic fish may also be sectioned and placed on microscope slides to get a closer look. We have also adopted morpholino technology within our lab to inhibit genes that we find to be expressed in the heart. Shown here is a wild type zebrafish embryo. Note the vigorous contraction of the healthy heart. And here's an embryo of similar age that has been injected with a morpholino to block a gene that controls the rhythmicity and force of contraction within the heart. Here's yet another mutant in which the inhibition of a particular gene led to the severe pericardial effusion and valvular defects, which end up resulting in red blood cells shuttling back and forth from the atria to the ventricle. Thanks for your interest in my research program here at Wisconsin Lutheran College. If you're a student interested in gaining research experience using the zebrafish model system to study heart development and the cause of cardiovascular disease, please contact me for more information.